Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Flick. Today I'm going to be reviewing another Netflix film, In the Shadow of the Moon. So in this film, we have a character who is a police officer. He really wants to be a detective. And then there's an event that happens in 1988 that ends up sparking a lifelong mission to capture a serial killer. Now I have to say, when I read the synopsis, I kind of thought it was going to be a throwaway cop drama type thing on Netflix. And it turns out it's, it's actually a very sci-fi driven movie. And I actually liked those elements of the film. This movie manipulates time and a lot of it takes place in increments of nine years. I don't want to spoil too much of the film. So that's actually a very integral part of the movie. So if you're going to watch it, I won't give that away. But it jumps nine years at a time. And seeing his aging and seeing the character's progression his kind of... So seeing the main character kind of spiral into madness and paranoia and obsession was really well done. I think the actor that played the main character, Locke, Boyd Holbrook, you might know from Logan or Predator, I think he did a really good job showing someone who's absolutely losing their mind and is just consumed by a case or by a singular thing, willing to risk anything, losing everyone around him just to catch this person that has created such a harm in his life. So I thought that was really well done. I thought the aging makeup on him was pretty decent. It's not incredible, but I thought it was pretty good. And like I said, I liked that there are sci-fi elements. I think they're handled really well. It's very creative. It wasn't a very throwaway story. You could tell that the writers and director of this film wanted to make something a little different, a little more ambitious than your normal movie like this. But at the end of the day, it has that issue where a Netflix movie has just enough budgeting to be made, but not enough to be made extremely well. I think the CGI elements in this movie are actually pretty bad in my opinion. Some look okay, but especially the very beginning of the film, this movie takes place in Philadelphia and they use like a CG rendering of Philadelphia to kind of show a disaster. And I thought it looked really bad and it's the first shot of the movie. So I was really concerned that this might look horrible, but they use it pretty sparingly. It relies mostly on normal effects, practical effects, but when it tries to delve into the realm of special effects, that's where it struggles a little bit. So if I were to rate this movie, I would actually give it a six and a half out of 10. I thought it was pretty serviceable. It was a lot better than I expected it to be, but it still does have those shortcomings like a lot of Netflix films do. It tries to be just a little bit too ambitious for my taste. But at the end of the day, a solid effort, definitely something worth checking out if you want to see something on Netflix that's on the better end of the spectrum. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Remember to like and subscribe, and see you next time.